Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 47th T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. So for the last several weeks, we've been working on getting cash uh, cash updates going between tiles. The two things we need to have intertile events, which is what's going to allow us to make an indefinitely scalable computer by connecting more and more tiles, is by being able to have an event that starts on one tile and ends on another tile. In order to do that, we need locking, where we say, please don't mess with this stuff because I'm going to mess with it. And then we need a cache update, where we say, here's how I messed with it. Make your cache copy of my MySpace look the same as MySpace so that we'll have a consistent view across the border. Uh, uh, in this past week, uh, using the loopback cables, using the uh, tile connected to itself, so it doesn't really know that it's connected to itself, but it makes debugging a lot easier, uh, uh, we actually got inner tile events working on loopback, and I'll talk about that. That's the main event. In the coming week, uh, having loopback cables, it turns out, it does not get us exactly all the direction that we need to go to get true inner tile events and I'll talk about that. All right, so uh, in education and outreach, yeah, so also last week uh, I did this podcast. Uh, there, the, the book I mentioned, uh, Algorithms to Live By by uh, Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths. Uh, uh, Audible.com is is uh, making a follow-on little podcast, a series of, of podcasts called Algorithms at Work, and uh, Brian invited me to come on and talk about the uh, T2 style stuff, so uh, I did that last week, and uh, they actually sprung to rent a, a studio in Albuquerque that I drove over, another one of these things, you know, no idea that this thing ever existed at all, and here it is, and uh, I talked to Brian, mostly Brian, and also Tom Griffiths for most of an hour, and it was really quite good, and, and you know, actually had a, a, a sound engineer guy doing sound engineering uh, uh, that I chatted with after. He was a nice guy. He's also a musician, and, and, you know, overall, it was really good. Like I said, we talked for about an hour. I, you know, I have no idea how much of that they're actually going to use, but we really hit everything. It was living computation. It was hardware determinism. It was indefinite scalability, <coughs> uh, and it was the T2 tile project explicitly so that was really great we'll see how much of that you know ever gets used i have no idea what the timeline is for that stuff coming out but did that and it was fun to be in a recording studio i never really done that before either Coming up in two weeks is this workshop at the Santa Fe Institute that uh, I got invited to about biological computation. Now, I'm not speaking at this thing. There's a bunch of people going, and they're not having that many talks, but they are having sort of little impromptu 10-minute things on the final day that you can sign up for, so probably I'll try to sign up for one of those and just, you know, let folks know uh, the stuff that we're doing here as well. So that's education and outreach. Uh, uh, all right. The main event, uh, uh, limited to the case of doing it on loopback, uh, uh, we actually have intertile events happening. For the first time, really, in the history of the universe, and it's incredibly slow. I mean, at this point, you know, I'm kind of adjusted to it. I sort of feel like, you know, like Rodney Dangerfield, right? You know, it's like, I'll tell you, uh, I feel all right now, but last week it was rough. Uh, um, and because because <laughs> it was uh, uh, it's 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 incredibly slow doing all the communications and so on and so forth. Now I, I warned us that it was going to be slow, but you know we're nowhere close to one air. Uh, uh, so I made a uh, a little time lapse that we'll take a look at, uh, and then I'll come back and say what I think we probably can do about it and so forth. So uh, oh yeah. Uh, um, T2 tile on full loop back. This is the f basically the first thing I got it working. Uh, uh, so we have one particle here that just tries to go west. Every time it has an event, it tries to go west. And look at this. It's actually going out the west and coming in the east. That's the intertile event. Uh, uh, but it's, you know, you know, look at my watch. <laughs> Uh, um, so, you know, that was speeded up like, you know, 1500 times or something like that, like two seconds in an hour. I don't know. Uh, um, it's incredibly slow. It's watching paint dry. It's watching grass grow slow. And, you know, 
we knew this was coming or we knew it was possible but you know I actually said, okay, now I could I could make a measurement of what was that air based on the video. So I did that, um, and you know the uh, the simulator itself uh, makes these claims, 0 0.032 air, you know, like that. But that is excluding certain overheads, and it takes a lot of time to sort of make estimates and the estimates to relax and so forth. So I said, well, you know, look, let's just we know that the uh, the dot is going to move one site every time. It gets an event because uh, uh, here here's the event I called it Watson you know like come here I need you it's kind of a this little one of Dante circles of inferno because it never actually arrives uh, uh, it just keeps going around and around but it just swaps west every time it has an event so you know events are happening all over the tile but uh, the all the ones that are happening in empty space they generate updates they generate traffic less traffic than they might be if there was stuff but there actually is stuff still going uh, um, so so here it is and so you know i just marked it so when it was all the way at the right hand end there, one of the times it got there was like almost 7 p.m uh, uh and you know there are 52 active sites which is sort of a weird number but internally there's actually 60 wide but then there's a stripe of four for a cache on one side and a stripe of four for a cache on the other side so you have to take away eight so 60 minus eight is 52. uh, uh so 52 events will actually take us around the universe once and that took it, it arrived back there at 918 that's like two and a half hours 8400 seconds 8400 seconds for 52 events point zero zero six air and you know to sit and look at it you don't see anything yeah <laughs> very lucky if you ever see the Watson move so that's a huge bummer I mean you know knowing that that was a possibility and actually saying here we are, uh, are are two different kinds of things so now the couple of you know there's a whole bunch of foot footnotes on this so uh footnote number one is you know the although having the loopback cables makes debugging and stuff much easier there's a sense in which it's actually a difficult case be for the the uh, performance because normally when we have a whole bunch of tiles in a grid and a given tile tries to grab a, a lock to the west say uh, uh, there will be some fraction of the time when the lock is already being used by someone else and it so the uh, attempt to grab the lock will fail and when that happens MFM just goes on and says we'll just have an event someplace else it doesn't wait because it really can't wait because the whole point is is that everybody's independent but when you're on the loop back it never fails because when this guy is requesting a lock out the west he's definitely not also requesting a lock out the east so every time we actually try to do an event that's on the border with the loop back it succeeds which means we have to do the locking and the cache update and send everything and so forth whereas when we actually had tiles inter tiles and they were talking to each other some of them would fail and go on and do it so we might actually get a little bit more performance out of that there's also a whole bunch of things and I've talked about them over the last weeks and months where I was giving up performance in order to make the implementation simpler more obvious or more robust and I even did two of those in just this past week that the, you know because there's a difference between the way the MFM code looks at the world for example the MFM code wants to take one lock at a time if it needs to it tries to get one and then tries to get the other now the underlying Linux kernel module that I wrote actually takes a set and you can say give me all these locks all at once and it will actually go for them in parallel but to preserve as much of the movable feast machine code for purposes of getting it running I don't take advantage of that I just try to get one lock I try to get the other similarly the movable feast machine is expecting to have a separate channel uh, six separate channels one for east one for west all separate that it can read from whenever it wants to whereas the way the Linux kernel module is designed it provides all of the MFM traffic on a single channel with each packet labeled by its destination so rather than redo all the mobile feast machine code in order to get it working I put an additional layer of buffering that reads all the packets in and dishes them out to six different uh, waiting areas so that when the particular direction east or northeast or whatever it is wants to go for a packet it can go to a specific place but it means the packets are getting an extra time getting copied an extra time that they don't need to there's a zillion things like that so on the one hand a lot of that stuff could be fixed but on the other hand, you know, that might buy us a factor of 10. It might even conceivably buy us a factor of 100, although I doubt it. But even if it did, that would be a half an error. And really, 
we just got to adjust to that's what the T2 tiles are going to be like. And, you know, maybe the fantasy of having it all be super fizzy and yet from here to the horizon, maybe that was asking a little bit much all along. I mean, after all, you know, it was on the third day that uh, the earth brought forth the plants and the actual fizzy, jumpy, run around the animals didn't happen until the fifth day. Maybe when we're trying to build a completely new computational stack, we should be thinking that looking at one of the looking at the T2 tiles running is going to be less like going to a movie and more like sitting in a garden. It maybe it is like watching the grass grow. And and that could go to something like Montreal next year that in fact it really might be a better idea to have uh, the display if if it works out in the lobby so that people could just be kind of going by it as if it was kind of like a mural and say wait, oh, hmm, that kind of changed you know from before lunch like that, like seeing things happen in the garden. And from a scientific purpose, you know, we can still just point the camera at it just like I did here and uh, do time lapse to see uh, what the future could look like if we had tiles that uh, had better air, uh, you know, that could have better air. So, <sighs> take some adjustments, but I'm okay. I think it's there. Uh, uh, like I said, Rodney Dangerfield. So that that's it for this thing. Yeah, that's it for this thing. All right. So now part of, you know, understanding all this is saying, you know, why is it so much worse than I was fantasizing? Because, I mean, you know, theoretically, this was like supposed to be engineering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, rather than fantasy. So uh, I want to go back and go through where the numbers came from, the estimates that were underlying this so that we can understand, you know, why is it that the T2 is coming out the way it is and so forth? It, does it actually make sense? This is going all the way back to 2012 now, almost seven years ago, uh, uh, when we published this paper in the Computer Journal. It was one of the longer papers that we did. And, uh, you know, one of the good things about good and bad, depending on how you break, uh, uh, is you get a lot more reviewing, a lot more intensive reviewing in journal papers uh, than you do from conference papers where, you know, it, you know, generally you kind of get either one round of a conference paper reviewing and it's either in or out because the thing's going to happen. Whereas journals, the, the reviewers can ask for lots of changes. And one of the things the journals, that the reviewers asked for here was, well, how is this going to work? How is it going to perform? And this section three that we added, performance estimation, was in response to a, a reviewer request. So uh, what we did was saying, well, you know, we don't have any actual hardware, so we don't, we can't really know, but we can simulate it, we can guess. <sighs> and here's <laughs> <laughs> Here's the main line. Uh, uh, we can expect an indefinitely scalable air in the several hundreds to a thousand or more without heroic engineering using affordable tile suitable for research. Ha! So, you know, that might be true for somebody else's definition of heroic engineering. It's not true for my hardware abilities with the T2 tile. So where do we go wrong? Let's do, we drill a little deeper into it. Since we have no actual indefinitely scalable implementations, here we employ a hypothetical tile process or two parameters or some of the figure seven. And here they are, and this is really the smoking gun. So we imagined back in 2012 that the, the little tile would be going at 100 megahertz. And in fact, these guys are going 720 megahertz and they're capable of going 1000 megahertz at gigahertz, but I usually have them running a little slower for uh, temperature. Uh, um, so it's going a lot faster than we were imagining for the hypothetical processor. Instruction time, two cycles per instruction, that's, com that's perfectly reasonable. The intertile mutex lock try 20 cycles, 20 cycles at 100 megahertz. Uh, that is five microseconds, something like that. Well, we saw that we were doing like 50, 100, 100 plus microseconds because we're doing it all in software in Linux. We tried to go fast, but we're nowhere close to that. Same thing for the unlock, nowhere close to that. And the intertile I.O. speed, 1 to 10 megabits per second, because we were hypothesizing to check a, a range of uh, variations, uh, um, we're not getting anything close to that either. The, the sort of raw sending stuff, pushing stuff through the wire 
can approach uh, a, a megabit per a megabit per second. Actually, get over a megabit per second on, uh, if the packets are big enough. But once again, that's not including all of the, tr the going through Linux, going from the buffers, going getting copied here, copied there, copying multiple places. We're not getting anything like the intertile I/O speed, and, and that's really where all the performance is going. I think uh, uh, with these kind of numbers, we got this kind of graph back in 2012. You know that you know it, <laughs> if. Every Everything was working exactly right. We might have gotten 7,000 air. Oh, yeah. That's if you could do an event in 1,000 instructions and, you know, you had a 10 megabit line and so on and so forth. So, in fact, we are much more down here in the very, very, very close to zero end of the spectrum. But, as we've been saying all along, for scientific purpose, for engineering purpose, any number is a benchmark. And from one point of view, the smaller it is now, the more fastest growing we can have as we make improvements going forward. And again, we don't know by the time we actually get to benchmarking dreg physics on an indefinitely scalable grid, whether it's going to be more or less than 0 0.006, we don't know. Uh, uh, all right, and it says... MFM performance is highly sensitive to communication costs and so forth. Well, that I think we've kind of uh, confirmed. It wasn't a surprise, but here it is. Uh, uh, all right. So now one of the things, I, I can't really take too much time about this, but uh, going forward, one of the reasons why uh, the loopback is an easier case is because, you, you know, if, if we're asking out of east, then definitely something exists on west, whereas in the inner tile case, they can be booting, they can be going up and down, they can be in the middle of anything, and stuff can fail in just about any direction. And so it pushes you, it pushes me, it's in the process of pushing me, so here here we've got the default fail illegal state, and that's the typical way that you write correct and efficient programming. Anything that shouldn't happen, you assert that it doesn't happen to stop the insanity. But the alternative approach, the self-stabilizing approach, is to say, well, if something unexpected happens, let's explicitly say, here's your safe space. If we get lost, let's meet at the old tree. Yeah, uh, have fallback positions just in case anything goes wrong. So this kind of code has been changing into this kind of code. If the unclaimed case happens, which really shouldn't happen, then we log an error about it to let somebody know. But then we go ahead and reclaim. It, uh, uh, which is a step towards actually letting things happen again and so forth. And this is happening all through the code. Uh, it, it really goes back to, well, just don't have time to go into it. Uh, I would love to talk about CCR, which is another one of the really big projects I did a long time ago that had similar kinds of self-stabilizing code uh, in it uh, for dealing with this kind of thing as well. So, just about out of time. Uh, Last week was rough <laughs> uh, for for a couple of reasons, but but here we are. Um, we're gonna make digital living plants with stuff flowing through them, and then just like you make time lapse videos of plants growing and see how amazing that is, we'll make time lapse videos of things happening on the T2 tile grid, and hopefully we'll get soon to that being amazing as well. So. All right, and the bottom line is it's not 0 0.006 air, it's 6 milliair loopback has been achieved. It's not the benchmark yet, but the benchmark is going to be in that ballpark, and we're going to say how many milliair can we prove that is established on an indefinitely scalable grid? We'll find out. Next update will be out in a week. Thanks for being here. You have a good week.